Hello, my name is Simon Osborne. I'm the editor of International Fund Investment. We are here this morning at the offices of Finance Malta in Valletta. I'm here today with Dr. Pierre uh, Mithud. He is partner in charge of financial services at EMD Advocates. Pierre, good morning. Good morning to you, Simon. I would like to uh, first ask you about uh, how the banking landscape has changed here in Malta. I understand it's changed significantly over the last 15 years. Um, perhaps you could outline what those changes have been. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, as you correctly say, there's been a, a big change in the past decade or so. I mean, basically, we, um, um, we managed to attract a number of foreign banks to our shores. And whereas before you had four banks um, serving predominantly the local population, now we have, as, as, as I told you, 24 banks currently licensed in Malta, um, serving both local, local clients and the international community. Um, so there has been a, a, a great development in that regard. And b besides, besides this, um, with the increase in the number of banks, so that the products and services on offer increase in the sense that we have a broader offering now, the banks have a broader offering, which would include um, private banking, retail banking, um, wealth management, uh, trust, trust services, um, uh, <coughs> syndicated loans, trade finance, and so on and so forth. Um, besides that, before the sector was very tightly controlled and publicly owned. Now we're, we have a situation where we have obviously a very liberal a, a free market with, um, uh, with private owners uh, holding stakes in D banks too. Despite the liberalisation of the banking industry here in Malta, uh, I note that uh, the financial services industry and banking included emerged from the global financial crisis uh, relatively unscathed. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that it is a way of, of, of banking. We have a very conservative, we adopt a very conservative model when it comes to banking. Uh, when uh, banks borrow on the basis of customers' deposits, they do not depend on wholesale borrowing to, to lend. And um, so we adopt a very prudent model. Our banks are well capitalized very liquid okay in fact in malta uh, they estimate that the amount of maltese deposits uh, is in the region of around 10 billion euro for a population of 400,000. and um, the loan to deposit ratio for malta's banks is at around 77 percent which compares very well with other international banks some of whom lend much more than the level of deposits uh, with, with, with them. And can you tell me a bit about how financial services in Malta are supervised? Uh, in Malta, since 2002, we have a single regulator for financial services, being the Malta Financial Service Authority, known in short as the MFSA, um, which regulates uh, banking, insurance, uh, pension funds, and uh, investment services and funds. The Malta Financial Services Authority being the single regulator, uh, licenses um, uh, regulated business in this area and supervises it, uh, uh, licensees on an ongoing basis. The MFSA has uh, now started to adopt more of a risk-based approach to regulation. Okay, and um, this, uh, the fact that um, the MFSA um, tries to get to know its license holders as much as possible uh, serves, in my opinion, as a dual benefit. It allows the MFSA to understand better the license holders are, and that uh, knowledge will enable it to adapt and um, be flexible where circumstances warrant. So the MFSA has always taken up the approach that its license holders are its customers. So, um, and this starts from a very early stage, even before a license application is filed. It is the MFSA's policy, in fact, to meet each and every, uh, to meet the promoters of each and every uh, prospective application for a license beforehand. 
discuss any issues uh, at the table, around the table, and it is only then that an, ap an application can be filed. And this is, in my opinion, one of the strengths of the MFSA. You don't find it in many other countries. You don't get this possibility in many other countries. Um, and this enables the promoters to iron out any, any issues which they might be at a very early stage. Over the last few years, uh, Malta has attracted quite a number of international financial organizations uh, to its shores. Uh, why do you think that is? What, what's the reason for this relatively recent increase in I think, organizations um, coming? Yeah. I think this can't be attributed to just one reason. I think it's a, it's a whole package. I mean, obviously the fact that we joined the European Union and the Schengen zone have certainly made Malta uh, much more credible and, um, and, has, and, and, and therefore Europe has become much more accessible. The fact that um, we have a very strategic uh, geographical location in the centre of the Mediterranean uh, makes us a convenient gateway both for North Africa and Europe. Um, the robust but flexible regulatory regime is another feather in our cap, I believe, as is the accessibility and uh, approachability of our regulator, the Motor Financial Services Authority. The fact also that you have uh, a pool of human resources in the financial service sector which are readily available and who speak English, because English is an official language in Malta, is also another important factor. And um, yet another factor which also obviously has its importance is the fact that there are important tax incentives which apply uh, because um, the shareholders of companies upon the distribution of a dividend can claim a tax refund and um, uh, this can, uh, through proper st structuring, can give some important uh, results, you know, um, uh, to and companies operating in this field. May I ask, uh, how do you think Malta overall is faring as a financial centre at the moment, as we emerge from yep. the global economic crisis? I think the fact that um, we emerged largely unaffected from the global financial crisis has given an added, cre added credibility to Malta and uh, as evidenced by the uh, Global Financial Centres Index published by the City of London, uh, which ranked Malta in the fourth place out of 66 jurisdictions uh, as um, one of those centres which is likely to increase in importance over the next few years, uh, certainly gives um, uh, added um, uh, importance to to the Financial Services Centre in Malta. Dr. Pierre, uh, Mr. thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.